Hey guys, what's up? It's Wolf here with Dolly, and today we're going to be playing some Dragon Blaze. Now, I still have my allergies going on, so I do apologize if um, this video does sound weird or if I sound weird or anything like that. But yeah, just letting you guys know, we're going to go through the huge patch notes. I shouldn't be doing this right now, I should be resting, but well, sooner or later we're about to have, like, going into maintenance. So I want to get it over with before I lose opportunity to do that. Then I have to go on the Forbes and everything. By the time the video gets up, then... Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> Alright, so chapter 6 is literally around a corner. And this is like a huge, huge update. We got so much stuff to cover. So, yeah. We're going to try and skim through it. I'm not going to try and look at it. <laughs> look too in-depth into everything. As much as I can. But you guys know I always do, or most of the time. This is like we're getting new monsters that we can use for food. Um, the inn, Sanctuary, has been upgraded. So it's going to be Angel's Sanctuary. Um, our level cap will be increased from 135 to 138. Alright, new ally DFI system. Get Alzelsted, uh... Exhausted? Yeah. Wow, that word does not work with me. <laughs> but I get exalted uh, heroes by using art enhancements. So they're going to call them exalted instead of majesties, like their names were intended. Huh. Interesting. Okay. And the same class. Okay, so basically just the normal enhancing and getting above overlords. Nothing really too new here. Azalda is going to be really annoying. I'm just going to call it Majesty. Majesty allies have immunity against all lower classes. So pretty much... Um, who was it? It was that insta-killing um, assassin that we recently got. They can't be insta-killed. They can't be affected by debuffs of any kind next to those who are lower. So all your overlords are going to be... Well, all your debuff overlords are going to be useless towards Majesties because they can't be affected by it. They can only be affected by other Majesties if you guys are curious. And we can only go up to max for now. In the future, they'll add in more. So, yeah, just letting you guys know every Overlord's debuffs and stuff like that is useless against the Majesties. So it's Majesty versus Majesty. Alright, so we got Death Crown here. Let's see what he has. See, yes, I'm going by the normal names they were given. Not no Crimson King first crown. Or is that their dads and moms, you know? <laughs> Could be, you never know. But anywho. So it's gonna be a mage. So Death Crown goes from a warrior to a mage, okay. DPS, defense down attacks one target for normals, inflicts damage to one enemy, additional damage per second on an enemy that is hit and surrounding ene enemies. Okay, nice. Sacks up to two times, cannot be removed. Nice, remove all buffs from enemies hit. It doesn't tell me how many enemies it hits though, so I guess it hits everybody. Can enemies receive constant damage over time? Receives increased magic damage. This stacks up to two times, cannot be removed. Increases additional boss damage for all party members. Stacks up to two times for 7.2 seconds while Fire Dragon is ruling the battlefield. Okay, so the Fire Dragon just comes on. Pretty much just his average stuff where he summons the dragon and he does like a skill. It just has a different effect. All debuffs directed at first crown is reflected. Okay, nice. So that means if you were to try to put a debuff on me, it will go back to the person who cast it. Okay, nice. All right, the passives. We land a critical strike. Oh, fire dragon will be invoked. And attack all. So you will want to build him crit. As much as you can put as much crit as, into him as you can if you guys can find some red crit uh, gear that would probably be best 
Remove all buffs, attack all enemies, inflicts damage and damage over time. This dies up to two times. Also, oh, he becomes invulnerable. Nice. All right, so pretty good mage that <laughs> takes damage. All right, second passive cat increases the caster's boss damage. This enhanced will increase by additional 10% per level. Nice. Increase damage instead of, uh, well, increase boss damage instead of, uh, Golem. So clearly he was made to fight, um, or boss Golem. And once you get the max enhanced skill, he is skills activated. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, his skill attack goes up. That was that was a bit weird for me to read for some reason. All right, Bright Spark. Let's see what you get. All right, so she's gonna be dual wielder. Uh, this is basically a new warrior called dual wielder in this game. So yeah, I I think it was called samurai at first, but now it's dual wielder for us in global. Does physical damage, DPS, places frozen mark of fire with normal attacks. Um, first attack deals damage to one enemy, gains frozen mark of fire to a random enemy nearby the attacked enemy. Okay, nice. Flicks damage to all enemies, Ex explodes frozen mark of fire, inflicts additional damage per mark. Alright. Enemies hit with exploding ice flame. That's you know what? Bright Spark has always been weird. She always likes her mixed elements. <laughs> she can never make up her mind if she wants fire or ice. And I receive buffs, ignores immunity. All right, so you can't you can't just be like, oh, well, I'm not gonna take any of those debuffs because uh, immunity. <laughs> She's still gonna hit you with it either way it goes, but next attack all enemies inflict additional damage per second for 12 seconds at this time Hosting can steal enemy buffs at a set chance Becomes immune Decreases attack received by 80% Okay Pretty decent All right, passives remove all enemy buffs. Oh wow, that's a passive too. Inflicts damage, inflicts fixed damage, explodes ice flame mark. Wait, can you guys make up your mind what you want to call it? I like the sound of ice flame mark better though. Inflict the additional damage per mark. Enemies hit with ice fire dragon. Freeze Wings attack are stunned for 7 seconds. When the hands level is increased, Freeze Wings additional marks damage increase by 90% per level. After Freeze Wing appears, all of Bright Sparks attacks will not miss for 9 seconds. Gain enemies a frozen mark of fire that cannot be avoided upon hit. Frozen mark decreases Hellsing's received by 10% I guess receive damage is what I want to say they did not specify that but all right stacks up to 10 times ice flame energy increases by four upon normal hits and uses what what, what is this oh uses first skill upon normal attacks or when using your first skill increases her additional boss damage and fix damage in arena Oh, well, there you go, guys. The arena character right there. <laughs> when enhanced, increases the additional boss damage by 20% per level. All right, her max enhancement is upon death, Bright Spark attacks enemies in a invulnerable state for 12 seconds. So she's pretty much like, uh, who was it? Ragnarok. The Ragnarok key. Where he would just stay alive and just keep attacking. While invulnerable attack, and the attack speed increase. All attacks cannot miss and will land crits. Oh, 
damn. When invulnerability ends, she will be revived with 80% HP. Oh, sh Jesus Christ. Also, after using Freeze Wing skill, all enemies that die within 9 seconds cannot be revived. This revival block cannot be removed and can ignore immunity and cannot be evaded. That's very, very good for PvP. Jesus Christ. So we got my girl Black here. Black actually looks really nice. I like her design. Alright, so let's see. Archer, physical damage, DPS. Inflicts splash damage on surrounding foes when attacking with their normal attacks. Inflicts damage to one enemy, stuns them for 12 seconds. Five attacks on each target inflicts pretty decent. <laughs> Well, I can't even say decent, a pretty good amount of damage. Black also increases additional boss damage by 216%. Okay, that's not that bad. Range damage and active skills. And physical damage for 34 seconds. Okay, that's not that bad. Can be stacked up to two times. Remove all buffs on one target. Inflicts damage. Light Fire Dragon inflicts damage on nearby enemies. Hits by Black. Inflicts additional damage over time on enemies for. Oh, Jesus Christ, that lasts for like way too long. Jeez. This stacks up to five time. Increases received damage. Well, received physical damage and received damage on enemies attacked. This could also be stacked five times. Inflicts damage for every Holy Light debuff. After provoking. Light Fire Dragon. She becomes invulnerable. All of the attacks are increased and become crits. Not half bad. Alright, let's go to passives. Increase enemy passive 1. I, I think that's a 1, or that's probably a typo. I think that's a typo. Increase enemy physical damage received by 19%. Range damage by 17%. When enhanced per level, it goes up by 1%. Alright. Pretty decent. Heavily in light. Her attack speed, attack, physical attack, additional boss damage increases at a certain amount when attack lands. This stacks up at the same time. Also, enemies that were hit by or normal attacks, Promise of Heaven or Blessing on Heaven, which is uh, your first and second skill, received additional additional range damage. Stacks up to ten times. All right. Pretty good for an archer team, or pretty much anybody ranged. Where our debuffs are removed, inflict damage on one target applies to Cerberus. Okay, so Cerberus taking buffs. Well, yeah, Cerberus, if you guys don't know, if you're new to the game, Cerberus takes buffs, and plus he gets stronger quicker if you're bringing magic units. So, Cerberus, you want to strictly bring physical units. Just let you guys know that. Alright, her hand skill increased skill attack, range damage, and boss damage. Nice. Alright, Blaze Eater. Grey Soul. Alright, Grey Soul, let's see what you get. Oh, you're a priest now, you physical heal. Okay, nice. Nice, 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 nice. Let's see what you got, though. Inflicts damage on one enemy or heals one ally. Oh wait, it says you're physical, but yet you're using magic, dude. What? What the hell, man? You want to explain this? <laughs> All right, still 30% of one enemy's HP. Okay, nice. Removes debuffs on all party members, and receives a heal for an amount equal to 60% of the HP stolen. Pretty decent. All right, what is this? Dark Shadow Healing. Divine Doctors cannot be affected by... Okay, so this won't do anything to bosses. 
Okay, so... Hold on. So he's not going to be good versus bosses unless his passives change that. So let's just hope his passives change that. Alright, his second skill increases attack, attack speed, skill attack, and receives healing over time. This can be stacked up to three times. Alright, really good buffer. Third attack, okay, he still has his clones. Alright, buffs on the clones stack individually from the real successor. Alright, so Grace will also becomes invincible. Oh, and vulnerable for seven seconds. So basically, he could just make clones and do. Well, his clones could do pretty much what he can do now. Which is gonna be interesting to see. I haven't really heard much, many people talk about um, Blaze Heater. Increases melee damage for all party members. When his clones' time is up, all party members increase their attack speed through um, Dark Fire Dragon's Will. Okay, I'm just making sure to check and see if there's any skills that are named that. This effect cannot be removed. Enhancing the level increases all party members melee attack by an additional 5% per level. This effect is not activated when his clone dies. Okay, so his time, so his clones pretty much have to live and time out. If they die, then the effects won't activate. It cannot carry out the flame wheel. Huh. Interesting. All right. Whenever he invokes a clone, the new soul's energy restores all HP to all party members. Well, not all HP. Restores HP to all party members. Increases physical damage and additional boss damage. Soul Restore stacks two times. Okay, pretty nice. Alright, so he's for League Battles. Alright. His max enhancement. Additional boss damage increase for all party members. Revise one party member when... Oh no. When healing clone. Oh. When Healing Clone or Fire Dragon Soul Eater has a Nis and Oh Shadow Clone. Whoops. So it's this and pretty much that. Okay, nice. That's actually not half bad. Revive party member cannot be attacked for seven seconds. Or can't take damage for seven seconds. That's what the vulnerability is basically. All right, Bloodwind. What do you have? All right, you're a paladin. You do magic damage. Your tank decreases attack speed, inflicts damage on one target, blasts them into the air for seven seconds, and prevents actions. So pretty much hitting them out of play is what I would want to say that, but. I don't think he hits out of play like Artemis used to do, but we would, we would have to see if that's what they meant. Increased damage received for bosses increases damage received by enemies hit by Wink of Gale. The fact Wink of Gale cannot be removed. Inflicts damage on all enemies, block them from receiving buffs for 20 seconds. Oh god damn dude. Increases magic damage received. Alright, so this can be sacked three times. Grants a shield to all party members, increases skill attack and additional boss damage and evasion by 25%. Oh, okay. Decreases damage received by 12%. Additional effects excluding Windsor's shield stacks three times, so this doesn't stack. This stuff stacks. So just your whole team evading damage would be really nice. From what I see, the magic the magic dealers are definitely catching my eye more than um, physical damagers right now. Increases his AoE damage and additional boss damage upon normal attacks. Gain a shield to one ally at a set chance. 
when enhanced, increases the AoE and additional boss damage per level. Second passive increases all party members' attack and damage received decreased. Okay. Increase immunity to all party members for guild siege and guild loot. I'm really hoping they um, talk about guild loot and rebalance it because, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about it once I'm done with this. Increase attack speed additional boss damage for all allies. Okay, so the reason I say that is just because when I put up a poll on the community tab on YouTube, a lot of you guys are pretty much saying that um, what was it? Guild loot is extremely hard to finish. Uh, somebody's, I think one person chose that guild loot is hard, but tower easy. Then there was four more people who voted guild loot is hard and tower is still pretty much one shotting them. So yeah. All right. Next. Transcended Ally Enhanced Cost. Let's see, Enhanced Stages for... Transcended Allies have been adjusted. Enhanced Levels uh, up to Stage 9 from 18. Adjusted Enhanced Materials you will now need Souls instead of... a uh, white what? You will now need souls instead of allies. Also, the number of required S's are lowered. I am not using my soul on those damn things. Screw that, you can bite me. Alright, absorbed enhanced system. You can now use an ally that is grade 1 as a form of currency to enhance the ally. Wait, what? So is this like transfer? Allies use the absorb system will be treated as currency that will that was used during the enhancement then. Then there is leftovers that they enhance. Wait, excuse me? When there are leftovers after enhancing, the leftovers will be sent to your inbox, okay? So I'm guessing you're taking these guys, transferring all their enhancements and stuff over to the Overlord. Okay. Oh wow, it's already been improved when it hasn't even gotten here yet? Okay. <laughs> When you're a Zelting an ally, you can now use both Overlord allies and Transcendent allies as sword material. Alright. Character improvements. Oh, about time. Allies are now a Zelted class. Or a Zelted grade. Nice, nice. Ally skills improved. Seals will now be activated accordingly when you enhance Max Ultimate Heart Stage and not according to skill level. Okay. Party leaders now get a passive skill that is unique to each class. Okay, nice. Removed jump to 120 feature that appears upon character creation. So you can no longer do that. Okay. Noted. Remove character enhance system via request. Oh, well. What was the point of that? Okay. Requests are changed into character enhance potions. What? Instead, you can use character enhance potions to instantly enhance characters. Characters level enhance range proved. So now instead of 15, it's 11. Okay. So yeah, this is for the warrior. Warrior divided into warrior and dual wielder. So warrior characters will be divided into DPS or tanks. Nice. Dual wielders like 
Oh. These guys will be changed into dual wielders. Instead of warriors. So yeah, keep that in mind. Wait, how is Lee a dual wielder? Oh, well, yeah, he is DPS, duh. So I guess everybody's changing DPS. Anywho, alright, tra transcendent equipment and runes added for dual wielders. Nice. Dual wielders levels will be average of all uh, rune levels. So I guess whichever one is the lowest um, rune level will go to that, I'm guessing. Now you could choose which allies to use between warrior or tool wielder and formations. Content improved. The content button at the lower right corner at the end has been changed to raid, fight, or explore. Okay, explore will be story, challenger, and daily dungeon. Fight will be challenge gorg, guild gorg, Challenger Gorg has been removed. Oh, okay. Closed content. Oh. Guild Battle. Nightmare. Adventurous Sanctuary. ROB. Tag Match. Hall of Fame and Tower will be removed. Okay. So we're losing guild battles and stuff like that. Everybody still does guild battles though. Well, at least I don't have to deal with tower anymore, I guess. <laughs> Anywho. Exploration area improved story dungeon. Change the name to story dungeon remove all stages that did not include in-game story. Change structure of the dungeons being divided into stages to just dungeon, provide completion rewards for each dungeon and season and regional rewards okay so pretty much finish the region you get get stuff basically in a nutshell users that have completed all story can go back and clear them from the start okay nice people party raid whoa 24 raid party. I doubt you're gonna find that many people. I'm just gonna say that. You'll probably get some rookies along with it. Just saying. Alright, so. Oh, well, never mind. It's, it's still pretty much four players, but it seems like you're bringing in, like, your allies. Yeah. Bringing in your allies. Finally! That's. See, that's what I've been wanting. Now we can actually use our allies, you know, make them useful instead of just using our sh shitty characters, you know. But four users will bring six people, your character plus five allies, to a raid. Each raid must pass through gateways to join the raid boss. Okay, gateways are like entrances apps. What the fuck does that mean? Rewards will be given based on the points earned by four parties so it's pretty much like nobla is what i want to say the higher the ranking you achieve the better the rewards world boss rewards include equipment gems and enhanced stones transcended enhanced stones actually what the hell i think that's first if that's a new item oh it will actually include um Seven Emperor Fragments too. You grind raid equipment, you will be it. Raid Essence, okay. Instead of salvaging points. New World Boss. Alright. So I'm guessing it's this guy. He looks... Oh, he's basically just a reskin of uh, what's his name? That zombie dude with the whole wing eyes and the banded mouth. Drops triple S gears from Mysterious Genesis set and true creation. Challenger Dungeon hand off hands off mode. Hands off mode can now automatically participate in Challenger Dungeon even if you're logged out if you're not logged into the game. Okay, that's nice. 
So basically it's pretty much like offline mode where you could just turn off the game and come back. Nice, that is really, really nice. Hands off mode is available to challenger dungeons that you have played over 10 times. So you have to play the stage over 10 times, then you get the offline mode on it. Okay, nice. All right, let's see your average clear time and probability of completion that are calculated from your 10 runs or well, for your recent 10 tries. All right, so you have a pretty if you have a pretty good successful rate for those last 10 tries, you have a good chance of um, getting uh, completions. So I guess complete all 10 without failing and you're pretty much good. It goes on for 8 hours when you log back on and receive all your rewards here again. Why would it... Wait, did you basically cap the time? So you have to come back in 8 hours? Pretty much the max you can go is 8 hours. And you have to come back and then restart it after eight hours. I, I don't know about that one. I think they should keep going until I actually run out of shoes. That, that's just me personally. All events and buffs are applied in Challenger. Okay. So I would still get the... Uh, this event and this event. Alright, a storage button added to the bottom, to the lower middle of the end to receive the unclaimed currencies from it. Alright, Challenger Dungeon also goes up to 77 now. It will now be three battles instead of four. Thank you. Because the third battle always is the last one that just kills my team. So that's going to make it like really easier. Because going through like four battles, your team is already in a bad state after the second one. Double S allies will drop through there. I don't think that's a good thing because uh, Double S allies cannot automatically go into <laughs> other allies. So that's going to be kind of an issue for me. Unless they are going to add an option to where you can put... An optional one of the pets that just makes you um, automatically combine another double S into another double S. That would be nice. Just an option to turn that off and on. All right. Various rewards re adjusted. Okay. Upgrade one. Triple the rewards of all battle content. Okay. So pretty much PvP content will be tripled. Triple daily dungeon rewards. Okay, nice. Triple drop rate of essence and allies inside of Challenger Dungeon. Alright, nice, 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 nice. Okay, let's go down. They made a adjustment to Janus. So what is it? It removes stun and silence skills from the bosses. So they no longer stun or, si stun or silence you. That's nice. Battle content. Rewards upgraded and adjusted. Okay, hold up. Difficulty of uh, monsters. Uh, wait, why would you? Difficulty level of monsters in siege battle and guild loot increased. Why would you increase it more? Guild loot doesn't need to be increased at all. Guild loot is already extremely powerful. It is not going to help us at all. Hmm. Why? 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 Ah, uh, well, that just makes me not want to touch good loot even more. Yeah, that that really just makes me want, not want to touch good loot at all. <sighs> Damage adjusted factor to arena, so basically just normal PvP. Adjusted damage factor to war boss and guild adventure. Decrease damage value. Hmm. Increase rewards from all war bosses. Nice. Cards is the wait what? 
Change your results to the period. Excuse me? So you're saying we could change them to keys and stuff like that? Is basically what you're saying? Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Select the exhausted character you want from Managed Hero. Alter their appearance. You need these cards for your exhausted appearance. Could be acquired through events or shop. His appearance and also increases their stats by 1% per level of the card. So now you can change them to look like keys. You know, just like the old keys we used to have. Nice. That's actually pretty cool. But the Alstid already look way better. So hope yeah, you can hide it. You can hide it if you want to. That's nice. So the alternate costumes are all the old Buster Keys, all the old Dark Lords, all the old ooh. Give me Asker. Give me Asker and just, ooh, say no more, dude. Just, just give me Asker. You know, because you could also use the Awakened versions of these characters, too. So if I wanted to look like Badass King Graham again, I could do that. <laughs> Alright, alright. I'm down for that system. Dark Magic system would be removed. Ah. So that means no more of those random stats in your weapons. Alright, so let's see. Orc Fortress improved 50% discount on retrying. Nice. Alright, so what's going to be in here instead of um, Dark Magic? Alright, so clear rewards to 5 skill cards, fragments, ticket summons. Have a chance to acquire rune fragments and skill card fragments when you defeat Orcs. Well, when you defeat Orc Fortress. So those would not only be jobbed. Stage to reduced. And change from shoes to tickets. Thank you. Because I have way too many tickets to be <laughs> just holding on to. Alright, let's so let's see. What equipment link system will be removed? Equipment per class now managed within hero growth. Wait, what? I haven't read about hero growth yet, but yeah, that sucks. That's going to be removed now. Boots, gloves, and helmet have been removed. Oh, wait, wait, what are they doing? I'm interested. Since you're going to move this, that just removes less farming. And now we have main weapon, off weapon, and armor. Name change from inventory to hero. So we no longer have our inventory system or is it just? I have so many questions I'm gonna ask right now. <laughs> Weapons can be managed per class. You can now find inventory is that okay, so inventory is still a thing. It's just that it's in, it's just been renamed, that's it. Alright. Transcended weapons improved. Transcended weapons will be awarded when you first create an account. Nice. Just to help out the new players. Transcended weapons will be equipped to each class. Well, for each class, its effects will be applied to all allies and all characters that of that class. Okay, nice. So that's how they're going to make up for this instead. So it's going to look like this instead. We're still going to keep all the rings. And we're still going to keep armor, offhand weapon, and main weapon. So instead of just having the rings out here, they just changed it. Just said screw the rest of it. That's good because that cuts down on like so much of our farming. Alright, neat. When you enhance the transited weapon, increase range damage for attack status will be greater than before. We'll have unique skills for each class. Auto enhance feature added. 
So it'll just auto enhance as soon as we get like fragments. Okay, pretty nice. Jewels have been improved. You can now equip and unequip jewels in six slots for each class. Wait, hold on. So it's no longer put it on your weapon. It's just literally put it inside of slots now. Okay. I am definitely interested. New ultimate gems. Ultimate jewels. Okay, nice, nice. Skill cards improved. You can now apply up to six skill cards each to each out. Oh my god. So we're making our units like really strong. I definitely want to see how this goes. Alright, interface improved. Remove skill. Oh, added raid button. Yeah, added raid button. Remove skill menu. Packages now turned into shop. Character icon. Full class icon. It's a manage. Achievement system improved. Pets improved. Two pets will be awarded to you when you create your account. Luna and Lim. Lamp. Lima. Lim. <laughs> Words. Anywho, these two pets will possess the feature of four pets that can be purchased with. Oh, rubies. Okay. Pet category changed for two paid pets. The little fairies. From pet to items. The pets. Removed four pets that can be purchased with rupees, so we can no longer get these pets. If your main pet is removed, Luna will be automatically equipped as your main pet. So we can purchase these guys. Or one of these pets that will give us uh, will give us the stuff that the other four pets do. But yeah, a lot of pet changes, okay. Players, okay, rewards for returning to new players. When your character of your account reaches a certain level, you will receive level achievement rewards. Alright. Beginner mission rewards improved. Return mission rewards improved. Alright, just a whole bunch of extra missions and stuff like that. Various improvements. Allies change from ultimate to arc. Enhanced. So the Dracos? Okay. Alright, looking for interesting stuff. Oh, are you actually going to save our party feature now? Available content. Yeah, pretty much a lot of stuff we have went over already. Wait, hold up. Remove transited essence from... Guild Siege rewards. Or clear reward. That's... Hmm... Okay. I can change to uh, Bright Spark, and we have a calendar that's going on here. All right, so let's see. Day one shoes. Oh, two hundred. Okay. Six, six. Oh, random souls. That. Mm. Essence. Okay. Gold. Character enhance potion. So are these bastards about to take us back to default basic enhancements for all of our characters that we worked so hard to get there? 
That's not the, that's exactly what it sounds like they're about to do. That's gonna suck. Alright, so we're gonna get Emperor Fragments. Runes, gold, random souls, and a selection of Overlords Ultimate. Nice, nice. Alright, so log in during the event and receive five alternate authorization cards. That'd be nice. Seem like they're all random too, so yeah. And all these events are ending. Wow, that took us nearly an hour. Okay then. So this skill book is gonna be removed and changed. So all of this comes tonight, which is gonna be really interesting to experience. I doubt it's gonna be on by the time I start streaming though. So that's going to be unfortunate. So, well, if it does go up by the time I start streaming, that would be perfect. I could just stream that instead and see what's up. But as of right now, yeah. Also, from what I know, you get a majesty, a free majesty ticket for pre-register. So make sure to pre-register for uh, the game while you guys still can. It is on Facebook, and for some reason they made it to where you need um, the Line app just to do that. So yeah, you can either get that off the Windows 10 store or your actual like Google Play app and download Line, and then they have like a barcode that you have to scan. I think I think that's what it was. Then they'll match you up with um, Dragon Blaze Asia. And they'll give you like a promotional key, I believe. Yeah, I don't get why that's a thing, but yeah, that's what route they're choosing to go. But yeah, this update is going to be really interesting. Definitely a big update. I am looking forward to it. Hopefully you guys are too. But I'm going to end it off here. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys in the next one. To Peace out. Tell you what you should do. I got a clear view. We're gonna make it soon. Just keep pushing through. Yo, what you got to lose? Yo, what you got to lose? Yo, what you got to lose? Just keep pushing through. Cause what you got to lose?